And now, CRM Audio presents Capit Red Lace's Power BI Corner with Business Solutions MVP, Scott Sewell. This episode of Captain Red Lace's Power BI Corner is brought to you by our friends at Kingsway Soft. Kingsway Soft is a leading integration solution provider offering software solutions that make data integration affordable and painlessly easy. Thousands of enterprise clients from over 65 countries and regions rely on Kingsway Soft to integrate data with various application systems in order to drive their business efficiency and fully leverage their information assets. Kingsway Soft is a leading provider of Microsoft Dynamics integration software, including Dynamics 365, CRM, AX, NAV, GP, SL, as well as many other applications such as Marketo, Dropbox, QuickBooks, and Salesforce. Whether you need one solution or several, Kingsway Soft works easily within the SSIS platform to make your integration process as quick and easy as possible. Many of their clients have seen three to ten times greater data integration performance after switching to the SSIS integration toolkit. We thank Kingsway Soft for their support of Captain Red Lace's Power BI Core. So yeah, Scott, you were telling me yesterday that you had something really cool to show me, and then I, I brushed you off and forgot to call you back. So, so now that we're talking, what is this cool thing you want to show me? So it's a, I'm working on a dashboard for measuring, uh, you know, as a consulting principle, you keep track of who's on the projects and how are they doing and what's, you know, how are we serving our customer? And there's also a bit of measurement that you have to look at with, and all this is with the CRM, but there's also a component of that that says, okay, at the beginning of the month, I thought that this was what my plan was. Now we're halfway through the month and that plan may have changed, but I need to measure what I've done uh, across the month against what the numbers used to be. And as you know, in CRM reporting, there's no way to look back and say, um, give me the numbers that used to be there. (laughs) Right. And that's something you come across every project where people, you know, I want to see how my pipelines change over time. Well, we don't know what it was a week ago. So CRM. So, so wait, itself. wait. So you're you're what you're telling me is you're using your analytical superpowers to track me and make sure I'm doing my job right. Indeed, right? indeed. That's okay. exactly it. Just call me Big Brother. A little power goes to your head. I see how it works. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for right, sure. So how are how are you doing this then? Since CRM doesn't give us what 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 happened yesterday. What are you so, doing? Yeah. So this is a this is an aspect where I'm reporting on CRM data. I'm pulling it into a into a uh, an Azure database uh, where I'm using SSIS with Kingsway Software Sponsor, which just because I, that's what I always use, um, pulling it in there, and I've been downloading this data for a, you know for over a year. I've been um, grabbing incremental updates from there. One of the things that I needed was this idea of this historical version of the data, and you know, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can just do a copy of the data every, you know, every month and just add it to a, a giant log and that thing becomes ginormous very quickly. You know, gazillions and gazillions of records very quickly. Or in my case, what I started doing is, uh, well, Kingsway Soft recently released a uh, tool called the Premium Slowly Changing Dimension uh, Object. And what that does is it works inside of SSIS. And you just feed it the data through there and say, okay, I'm looking at my system user table. Here's the system user ID, their full name. Here's who their manager is. And here's their stat, you know, are they still active or are they inactive? And I'll feed that through the slowly changing dimension. And it'll take, it'll take a state timestamp every time one of the, one of the attributes that I'm interested in changes. Now, there's a lot of attributes. I don't care if they get a new phone number, in my case. I don't care if they get a new phone number. I don't care if you change their middle name or, uh, you know, at a birthday or anything. I'm not interested in that. I'm only interested in about five or six fields off that record. So I feed it through the slowly changing dimension um, uh, object. And, and there is a – there's one that's built into CR, uh, to SSIS, but this one works so much better. The other one's really painful to use. This one works so much better. Uh, and it looks and says, okay, what was the last value that you had for these, uh, for that this person's record for these five fields that you're interested in? Compare that to what you're getting out of CRM right now, 
And if they're the same, fine, move on. If they're different, we're going to insert a new record into this, into a separate table that says, okay, on, you know, on March 5th, Joel changes his, uh, Joel's uh, title changed from, you know, uh, MVP to MVP uh, Pro. So he, he updated that title. So I'm going to capture a change record for that. Uh, slowly changing dimensions are used heavily in data warehouses and all, but I'm using it for Power BI. So I'm feeding this into a table to keep track of everything as it changes. And then in Power BI, I'm extracting that and saying, okay, when I'm, when I'm reporting on a record, a record that took place, uh, an event that took place at the first of the month, I only want the data that existed at the first of the month and show that and, and my, make my report against that. I, and if changes happen after the first of the month, I can, I can ignore those changes. Very important uh, aspect of that. The other piece of this is once I've got these slowly changing dimensions, like I said before, I'm actually taking that information and pushing it into an analysis services uh, and I'm using the Azure Analysis Services tabular model. You'll hear that terminology quite a bit. This this idea of a okay. tabular, yeah, this, ta this tabular model is a, um, I don't want to say it's new, but it's a newer version of SSI, um, SSAS, Analysis Services. It's a different way of storing the data and retrieving the data in Analysis Services. And the reason that's important on a Power BI uh, item is, that the engine that's used in analysis services tabular model is the same engine that's in Power BI.com and the same engine that's in Power BI and the same engine that's in Power Pivot in Excel. It's all the same engine, it's just scaled up. So that uh, if I write a query in in a Power a BI, excuse me, the Power BI desktop, that same query can be run against uh, analysis services as long as you're in the tabular version of anal a tabular model of uh, analysis services. The challenge with the analysis services used to be that it was the uh, MDX queries were the old style. I don't want, I don't want to call them old style because they're still useful, but the 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 traditional version of analysis services very very powerful, but also very difficult to use for most people. And uh, they've introduced this tabular model, and it's a seamless move from from tabular, from uh, Power BI, uh, Power BI.com, BI Excel Power Pivot, all the way up to analysis services in the cloud. And so I'm taking that data and moving it up to analysis services and then streaming it directly into my dashboards. So performance is like crazy. It's awesome. Uh, been very, very happy with the whole process. So, yeah, so that's what I'm excited about sharing with you today. This new version of SSAS, is that easy, more approachable than the old version? Because I remember back in like 2008, 2009, yeah. you and I looked into analysis services, and it was really intimidating and hard to make heads or tails out of it. Very much so. Very big difference in, in terms of accessibility. Now, I mean, again, it's still... It's still more complicated than, um, you know, it, it is a comp it's, it's still a, a tough project product to get your arms around, but it's much more accessible than it used to be. And again, if you get a comfortable, if you build the comfort level in using Power BI on your desktop or PowerBI.com or even using Excel Power Pivot, you've already, it, while you're using that, you're learning the exact same skills that you can use for analysis services. And the, the fun part about that is all that data transformation stuff takes place between your data sources and your analysis services cube. And then Power BI just, Power BI, uh, just becomes the, the presentation layer. And so it just gets all the, the chewed up data and just presents it. And it's very, very fast. Um, so that's, that's been a fun, fun exercise to, to get comfortable with. Okay, great. So, what what are some cases? Why would you use that versus you know versus other things? Is it you're just doing complicated roll up queries or just the the trending over time? What's what's the okay. real reason that you had yeah. to use it? Was it because to see changes over time? So the first part the the first part using this slowly changing dimension uh, widget from uh, out of the SSIS integration was to be able to capture those changing values over time. Uh, I used to try to use the audit uh, extract, 
but that becomes very, very thick and very, uh, uh, it can't, the queries against that are really tough. There's uh, lots so, of noise in that too. Lots of noise. But, uh, I mean, it's, I can use it and I've used it before to, uh, I'm not afraid to use it. Uh, but this using the SCD, the slowly changing dimension really got me to got a, a, a very clean version of that data. Um, so that it shows me exactly only the records that changed, only the fields that I'm interested in, what they changed. And I've got the new values each time as well as a time and date stamp to say, wow, how long was this record val- uh, valid for? Um, you know, for, how it, is the slowly changing, how does that tool work as part of SSIS? Do you mm-hmm. have to have a job run every time a certain field changes? I'm just, just trying to think if it's an SSIS yeah. job, how do you ensure that you are capturing every change? That's a good question. If if you're looking for, I, I need changes that happen like multiple times a day. I need, um, let's say I need changes every time it changes on the hour, every every five minutes. I need every one of those changes. You're going to have to run this thing multiple times. But most of the time, you don't need that level of granularity. In, my, in our case, in the, in the dashboard I'm building for you, is I really only need a single timestamp. So I run it once a month at that time, and I grab the – well, actually, I run, it mo- I run it multiple times a day. But, but I'm only interested really in the time that I ran it at 2 o'clock on uh, the second day of the month. And so, you, you know, within SSIS, you run it. You set, schedule your jobs. You run it. I actually run it every time I extract data from CRM, which I, I set it up for extracting it um, every f- uh, f- uh, four times a day. And so I'll pull that data out. Um, and as it comes out, it's going into my local tables. And at the same time, I'm split, I am uh, send another stream of that same data over to my SCD. And it looks and says, hey, is this the same data you had at the last time? If so, great, I'm fine. If not, let's either insert it and mark it as a, uh, a new record, or we'll update it and say this is an update to an existing record. Um, so it's very it's very useful in that. So so that's the SCD, and I I kind of I kind of blended the transition. But there's also the same even if you don't need that, using publishing it to analysis services tabular is helpful too, just for performance and scalability. So okay. two topics there, sort of two for the price of one. Do you see other uses for the slowly changing dimensions tool outside of feeding analysis services? Maybe in a in a more general integration scenario. Oh, absolutely. You you don't need it to go to analysis services in order to make that v- viable or helpful. It just gives you that trail. It's like it's kind of an audit, but without the noise of the CRM audit piece. And you can actually audit against another another data source that's not CRM. Maybe CRM plus some AX data that's coming in. Um, I would use that to capture a log and say, here's the values that are changing. Particularly if you need to report on you know, any kind of financial reports that say, I need to compare performance of this value um, year over year, quarter over quarter, month over month, where I say, not only I need to know what the value of the opportunities in my pipeline were at the beginning of the month versus what those same opportunities were at the end of the month. You know, as you as you if you report on CRM data right now, you're always getting exactly what's happening right now. You don't have that visibility into. All right, what the other part of analysis on on that data, which gets into another area, is starting to look at trending and saying, okay, how long does it take a an opportunity to move from new opportunity to um, uh, you know a customer validated to solution proposed to um, then you know a compl- a win or a loss. If you're you can you know you can do things in the uh, workflow that'll insert a update a value or things, but you can use a SED and just grab the status all the time, uh, and you can tr- and you get that log. That would allow you to start doing some generalization and saying, okay, for projects over a million dollars, it usually takes X number of days to move through the pipeline from zero to complete. Um, but you know what, if it's, if it's over a million dollars and it's Joel is the, is the, is the, uh, salesperson, then Joel, that moves f- through the pipeline at a faster pace than if 
Scott is the salesperson. And that and those opportunities take another extra, uh, on average, take an extra four weeks. That would allow you to start then building that, using that information to project or uh, use predictive against that to say, hey, I've got two opportunities that went into the pipeline today. One of them's Scott, one of them's Joel. They're both over a million dollars. Which one of them? Which one of them can I count on for the end of the month? I don't know if you. I don't know if you noticed, uh, but in Dynamics 365, talking about the scenario, and that's a common one that you mentioned, is how long do opportunities stay in each stage of a of a sales cycle? That would be interesting for that. But actually, the process flow is now showing how long has this record been in this current stage. So it's okay. kind of going that way. But Getting that. Matter, yeah. If if you have the ability to say okay, analyze for this person or, or like for deals that we have that are, you, are in the qualify stage, how long do they normally stay in the qualify mm-hmm. stage so we can tell if we have some that are outside of that, you know, longer than that, they may not be valid deals. And same, same kind of thing where, where like, for instance, you think about the value of an opportunity at the beginning of the month. Let's say that um, I put the opportunity in and I start sandbagging my opportunities. I say, I think they're only going to be worth um, 50, I only put in 50% of what I think they're worth. And at the end of the month, I can always, you know, exceed my quota by, you know, landing a few of those that overshoot. And, um, uh, so having, being able to vi- see, has the value of this opportunity grown or shrunk over the course of the month, over the time is any sale, any particular salesperson at, do they tend to over, I mean, I can think of one person that, uh, been gone for a long, long time, who always had these huge opportunities. They were always so important and, you know, everything was going to fall around and then, you know, they always faded. They always faded out very quickly. Uh, so that giving you visibility into patterns uh, uh, among your team on that. So, yeah, so it was really, really useful stuff. 